Hi guys, this is Atco. Hey, I just um, was at a Goodwill the other day and found something pretty interesting I wanted to show you guys. This is a, uh, a replica of the original Thomas Edison electric bulb. It's a replica, of course, but it looks like it. And uh, he came out with this in 1879. Actually, uh, patented in 1880. And I got this for uh, $6.59. And I thought it was pretty cool. It says right on there, 1879 Edison replica lamp, 1879. And I started thinking about it. You know, it would be, it was long before my parents, and I'm not a, a young kid, and my grandparents and my great grandparents, they had electricity. But behind, anything behind that, there was no electricity at that time. And it seems like to have been a long, long time ago, but actually from a history standpoint, from our country uh, or any technology life, um, it isn't really that long ago. Um, less than 150 years. And if you think about it, there was no electricity. Okay, now we had maybe the, the greatest inventor of any time was uh, Thomas Edison and he came out with tons of things but what his people know him the most uh, was the phonograph and the electric light so there actually was a little bit of uh, uh, electric lights um, even 20, 30 years prior to that, but it was very, very high uh, voltage, and they used like arc lights, and they weren't for a house, it was for um, streets, and that was back in, uh, in um, France, in Paris. But it was very, very uh, rare, and uh, basically everybody had to live with candles or... Um, you know, you could have a, a lamp using um, you know, kerosene or oil. And he thought there had to be a better way. So he worked on his, and he was trying to find, he, he's been playing with electrons. Against there was no electricity, but people would, would play with electricity just as, uh, or uh, scientists to uh, experiment with things with electricity. Nobody really completely understood it. But he loved it, and he was trying to come up with something that he could use with this. And he could see that if he put a voltage into a wire, it would get white. It would get, you'd get light out of it, but then it would burn out, generally seconds before something would burn out. And he thought, well, there must be something that you could put a wire with electricity going through and uh, it won't burn out. Well he tried just about everything he could ever come into. He went over more than a thousand different things and tried this for two years and some extent maybe he would get even as much as 15 minutes before it would burn out. Just couldn't find out how to keep that thing from burning out. I'm not exactly sure exactly how he came out with that, but some along the line he thought, hey geez, the reason this stuff keeps burning is because the oxygen burns on it. Uh, if there wasn't oxygen in there, what would happen? So he put uh, a uh, filament inside of a bulb and then sucked out all the, the vacuum out of it, all the air out, and tried it again. Next thing he, he had was uh, it would just keep burning. And he left that thing on for maybe a, a week and then turned up the, vo the, uh, the voltage to see what would happen to get more light. He did burn it out at that point. 
but he realized that this is the fix. This is the fix. So he came out with his, and then uh, he patented it in 1880. Okay, now, all right, what do you do with it now? Uh, you can't just go into uh, a store and, and buy uh, a bulb and plug it into your house. Nobody had electricity. <laughs> so he had to come up with a way to have electricity to people's homes. He was playing with all with DC electricity voltages and uh, he started creating a uh, power company and he would make these big power plants and uh, then they'll let the wiring go out to, uh, to people's uh, homes. Although originally this started uh, just running these lines down to some streets and to some of the, uh, the businesses. But he started coming at that where people would get these bulbs and they could get some light. The one thing he had though was this, was that um, uh, he was using DC. And that was the only electricity you could buy. And uh, DC works great. There's nothing wrong with DC. Most of any of our, a lot of uh, PCs and things we work with, they use DC in the machine. But as far as transferring the power from the power plant to wherever you go in a house or whether it's a, a business, DC does not transfer DC long from a distance. Uh, so whenever he would create his power plant, he could only make them that anybody who plugged in from that point on could get maybe about a, a half a mile from his power plant. If he ran out of length there, the next half mile from there, he had to create another power plant because DC just could only handle DC too long. But it still was fantastic and started coming out. And um, another inventor named Nikola Tesla. This was in the 1880s and he thought, you know, there might be a better way to do than this DC because of the problem it has in transferring any distance. And he came out with using AC. And by doing that, you could have a higher voltage and transfer that a lot further than you would with uh, DC. So what he had done, he had pretty much came out with this idea, but he was doing this for a company called uh, Westinghouse. And... Uh, they looked at what they wanted to do to see if this, this would be better for electricity for people's homes than the way that the DC that uh, uh, Edison had been working on. So they did a, a test. And they did this mainly in a test, uh, you know, there was, there was kind of a, a uh, competition. Uh, Edison had already bought, uh, created about a hundred of these power plants. and. Uh, of course, he didn't want to lose his company that he just had, even though he was starting to think this is a better way to do it. So they had a competition between the two different types of power, between DC and AC. And, and what they had was um, they used the, the, they were having a, a World's Fair in 1893. And they said, I'll tell you what, well, we want to try this electricity that everybody's coming and knowing about. And they want to see what kind of lights can we get and how much lights can we get in the, in the fair. So the competition was that who can do the most with bulbs and lights using one power plant. Well, I'll tell you, it didn't take hardly any competition because Edison with one plant, even making it as big as he could, there's no way he could cover all the bulbs they wanted to have in the fair. With, Ed, with uh, Tesla using AC, it had no problem. And from that point, it's like DC just dropped almost overnight, and AC looks like that's going to be the standard for people to start using electricity in their homes. Okay, so now we start getting into the 1890s, 
people are starting to get it. Of course, it's only the biggest cities that would start getting electricity. And all they were really were getting was uh, lights. That was it. And you're lucky if you got more than one or two lights. Because people were living with just uh, candles. And uh, there was gas. There was some gas you could buy, too, and have that in your house. But it's a lot more dangerous than to have the electricity. So uh, people would start getting these uh, these bulbs, and, and I'll tell you what they called them. They weren't very fancy at the beginning of time. They would call them a pentium pentium uh, bulbs because all it was was just a a wire hanging down from the the ceiling and just a ball plugged into the middle of it. But I'll tell you at that time it was a a amazing invention because you could get a a lot more light than you could out of a a, uh, a candle, and you could, it would play forever. I mean, well, a lot more than a, a candle ever would. I think they, by then they were hoping to get you know 600, 700 hours out of a bulb. Back in the early 1900s, if since electricity was only used for the bulbs, then uh, a lot of the, the power companies would turn off the electricity during the day. Because what do you need the, the bulb for? I mean, it's light. What do you need light? People were used to having just candles and that at night. And so and they didn't have any electricity during the day. And they turned it back on at night since when you could use your, your bulbs. Nobody had anything else to do with the electricity. But people were starting to think, what could they use for it? And the first uh, appliance that came out that they could use electricity was a um, uh, an iron for uh, you know doing your washing to iron. Came up, and when people started trying it, and you'd have to unplug the bulb that you were using, and then they'd plug it right into the socket of the the electricity so people didn't have their wires all set up for their houses yet with plugs or anything like this and then when some other uh, appliances came out later especially uh, a great one it was uh, an electric fan I mean on a hot day there was no electricity for um, air conditioning or anything like this and the fan came out as a, uh, a product Oh man, all of a sudden everybody wanted to use one of those. And then they wanted to have power all the time. Alright, so it was kind of interesting. All this was, was happening from about 1890s to about 1920. By 1920, most of the cities had electricity. But it was another 20 years before uh, rural um, areas had uh, their electricity. Some of them weren't getting their electricity you know, until the 30s and even the early 40s. So when you think about things like this, uh, we don't think twice about plugging in something and playing all of our things we used to have right there. None of those were there back just 150 years ago. So anyways, uh, I just thought I'd give a little bit of that history that I know about. And uh, again, uh, I really like this. I'm glad I got this. Look, $6.59. And it's going to sit right next to my uh, um, Edison phonograph. Alright guys, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. This is Atco, signing off.